and Yari, our CEO, couldn't be here today, so I'll be filling in. Our Wawa Gold project, uh, it's 100% owned. We consolidated at the beginning of last year. Um, we've had a successful 2022 drill program, drilled about 36,000 meters so far, and we're fully funded right now uh, into Q1 2023. Um, it's a high quality project. Uh, Brownfield, Carrie's gonna get into the uh, financing a little bit later. Um, we're in a uh, prolific gold jurisdiction. Uh, we're surrounded by quite a few majors, Alamos being one of them with Island Gold, about 40 kilometers to the northeast of us. They're a major player in our operation as well. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a pretty active uh, gold district. The project itself is well situated, about two kilometers outside of the town of Wawa, Ontario. Easily accessible, a lot of infrastructure, and like I said, it's a brownfield property, so there's about 10 past producing mines on the site. Uh, they produced historically about 120,000 ounces of gold. Our current operation, it's a sheer hosted gold deposit following two structures, both highlighted in green. First is the Jubilee Shear, and the second is the Minto Mine. So looking at the two resources focused on the northern side of our property, we have the Jubilee Shear hosting our Saluga deposit. It contains about 600,000 ounces in a thick shear package, five to 20 meters thickness of high grade gold concentrate, and it stretches about three kilometers in strike length. Our second deposits, the Minto Mine Shear, it's a bit smaller, more discrete gold uh, in a smaller shear vein system. And that's about 100 or one kilometer, sorry, uh, strike length. And we have about 100,000 ounces in uh, a 6.8 gram, gram per ton. Our Saluga deposit was previously mined down to about six levels, uh, about 300 meters depth, um, and they followed drifts along these uh, high-grade cores, but there's a lot of gold left. Uh, they didn't have a great understanding of the shear structure, and there's a significant plunge to the deposit that we've been able to get a, a really good understanding on. Uh, so these uh, levels have been closed, but the, the infrastructure remains on property. Um, okay, so these are our two shear systems. What we want to build now, we just are lacking drill density. Um, so what we want to do is increase our understanding of the deeper complex in our drill system. So we're focusing on the Serluga deposit to the north and south, as well as the Minto Mine down plunge. What we've managed to come up with so far is that as we step out, so for example, in the northern footprint of the Sirluga resource, we've been able to intersect high-grade mineralization continuous up to about 300 meters expanded to the north, as well as about 550 meters expanded to the south at a vertical depth of about 600 meters. So some of the high-grade intercepts on that are in the north about two grams per ton over 27 meters, um, as well as eight grams per ton over about five meters, six meters. And then in the south, we have continuous grades as well, about 27 grams per ton over three meters, and about four grams per ton over 10 meters are some of the highlights. Using this drill program, we've also been able to target some gaps in the Minto Mine resource. We tested to see whether or not the gaps were true gaps in mineralization or whether or not they were in fact mineralized. And what we've been able to come up with is that there is still gold remaining in these gaps that can be infilled into the resource. Two of our successes there, uh, we have um, grades of about 20 grams per ton uh, over almost three and a half meters. Using this exploration program as well, we've been able to target some satellite deposits that are proximal to both the Serluga and the Minto mine deposit. Uh, some of these include the Minto B structure. It's included there in um, orange. I'm not sure how this works, but um, we've had some high grade mineralize and mineralization intersections there as well, um, which acts as a nice bridge between the two deposits. Our shear events are not single events. Uh, they, it's within an intrusive complex. And so um, 
there's many iterations of these structures parallel on the property and they seem to all be hosting mineralization. It's a pretty simple story all in all. We know there's gold there. Our resource right now combined is about 700,000 ounces. And we expect a similar story to Alamos with Island Gold and West Dome, both starting with resources around the 500,000 ounces, which is, we have about 700,000 right now. And then once they started exploring at depth, the grade and the continuity of the mineralization seemed to increase, significantly increasing their resource. As we expand both of our resources, this is the results that we're getting, increased continuity and increased grade. So some of the strong, we're in a strong mining district. We have great working relations with the local indigenous communities as well as the town of Wawa. Um, we're primarily on patented land claims, so we own surface and mining rights for the core of our deposit. Um, our ongoing environmental work, um, and we have an ESG that we released late, earlier this year. And I'll let Carrie step in. This is our, our management team. Um, I'm Carrie House, corporate development for the company. As Danielle said, uh, Quinton can't be with us today, so we're holding the fort. Um, we have a very strong board of directors that I'd like to take you through right now. Paul Martin, who was the CFO and CEO of Detour Gold, um, is on our board, a very strong member of our board, and um, this is his first board position since leaving Detour. Uh, Niels Engelstadt is with Alamos. Alamos is a 19.4% shareholder in our company. Um, Rachel Goldman, who is a director and uh, le lends a lot of expertise to our company, runs Paramount Gold in the US. Andrew Bowman um, was a former VP at Barrick. And Drew Anwell is, uh, was also with Detour Gold and now is with um, Generation Mining. Quentin Yari comes with over 20 years experience as well and has a, a very strong name in the Canadian junior mining market. Um, I'd like to take you back to our capital structure slide because we have um, quite a bit of support from the institutions, um, not just in Canada, but globally. Um, Haywood has written research on us. Uh, Pierre Viancourt is a very strong supporter of us. We actually raised 20 million in a bot deal last year. Um, we had three to four drills turning, uh, which has taken us from our 700,000 ounce mark to almost doubling our resource. Um, we now have just completed an, a further 5 million bot deal in September via Haywood, Canaccord, and Laurentian. Um, we don't print warrants. We're very tightly held. Our, extent, our uh, existing warrants are from previous financings before. And uh, we have a lot of key institutional investor support, including Crestcat in 1832. And I think that's it. Thank you very much.